Hey guys, Paul Tyre here with my first video on the channel for the 2024 election cycle. Uh, today is Wednesday, June 19th. Um, my YouTube channel is pretty much going to be like polling analysis, election predictions, stuff like that. And I'm going to try and keep it as like a non-partisan perspective as possible. Uh, I know that's a pretty hard thing to do, so but I'm going to try my best here. So I've already filled in. Oh yeah. Also, before I c continue, my po I. Predictions are pretty much based on how I think the election will go, or the state will go, plus the polling data I've seen, right? So I, kn I know like there are contradictions to that, but I'll explain once we get in. So I've already filled in the likely states uh, for President Biden and for President Trump, Ohio, Texas, then Colorado, New Mexico, and then Maine for President Biden, President Trump here. Now the rest, I would say, are going to be somewhat swing, but at the same time, I don't think Florida would, so I'll just categorize that as lean. You can make the case it'll be likely. I, I as of right now, think it'll be lean. And then Iowa f as well. Iowa, you can make the case it'll be likely. I personally think it will be likely. Uh, yeah. So 219, still 198. Uh, so let's continue. So let's go with New Hampshire. New Hampshire, this is a state where President Trump, I honestly think he underperformed in the primary. Uh... Now you can make the argument it was an open primary, it was liberals voting for Nikki Haley, you can say that, but at the same time in a general election, it's not really a good look, right? And it kind of does show what's happening, plus President Biden is leading New, New Hampshire, uh, so I'll categorize that as the lean for him. And I don't think it'll be, I could see it being till, I don't think it'll be likely though. And yeah, and now so far it's 202 to 219. So let's, let's start off with the West Coast, or let's go from West to East. So Nevada. F so what I've seen uh, this election cycle, or at least President Trump, I don't know about the Republicans in general, but at least for President Trump, he's making gains in the disaffected vote, uh, the minority vote, so like African-American, Hispanic, Asian, uh, and then the youth vote, right? And President Biden, he's doing better with the older vote. The older vote, like the suburbanites. Uh, but here's the thing, the... African American vote, the youth vote, and then I get you could to some extent Hispanic vote. They don't really vote that much, right? They don't vote as much as the white suburbanites do because these people like love voting and the uh, and even like the older voter, right? They love voting, and President Biden's doing better with those, but then President Trump is like eating into the margin, right? So Democrats are still gonna win the youth vote, African American vote, but it definitely makes a difference if they win the African-American vote by like 95% like President Obama did, or if they win it by like 70 points, that's like enough to win, uh, enough to sway an election. But with that being said, Nevada, this is a state kind of getting crushed by inflation. <coughs> Their economy is somewhat based off of tourism, right, because of Vegas. Um, and you're not going to really see that much with inflation, right? So I'll categorize that as lean. I don't think it'll be likely. I've Based off of polling, I've seen... Um, yeah, what is it? Let me let me pull it up. Yeah, I've seen President Trump like the average lead is I think it's four points. I don't think he's gonna win by out of the water margins, but it's still gonna win regardless. Um, yeah, based off of economic purposes, and then Arizona. This is gonna be somewhat tricky to categorize. So, although President Trump leads in the polls, right? Abortion is gonna be abortion, and then the title of him being a, a convicted felon is going to be hammered in on billboards, TV ads, stuff like that in Arizona. And abortion is a really unpopular issue for Republicans. Uh, the Democrats know that. They're kind of just drilling that in. But that being said, this is the Sun Belt. The Sun Belt's having buyer, buyer's remorse on President Biden. So with that being said, I do think it'll be extremely close, but very, very narrowly margin to President Trump. I don't think it'll be lean, but I do think it'll be close. And going President Trump's direction. Georgia is a state I do think it'll be lean. Same with North Carolina. Um, I think Georgia, which is going to flip back to Trump. So this already puts him at 268. I don't think the Georgia election case is doing too much to change. Um, yeah. Despite like the demographic change, President Trump has a role of support there. And then he's also eating into the whole minority vote, right? And then Georgia doesn't really have that much of an elderly population um, that would go... And then, also, George is more of like, it, it is, I'm pretty sure, um, abortion. Overall, I do think it'd be a pro-choice state, but I don't think that, um, 
it would really make the difference here. Like Georgia's more conservative on abortion, right? Although it might be pro-choice, the margin is like a lot smaller, and I that's kind of enough for President Trump to win here. Um, and now we have 268 to 202. So Trump just needs any of these states, honestly. With that being said, I think Pennsylvania will go for him in a tilt margin. Um, he's leading in the polls. Uh, Pennsylvania is a battleground state, right? A mix of urban liberals and then rural like conservative voters. But Biden really needs strong turnout in Philadelphia, and I don't think he's going to get that this time around. Especially with the whole... Um, what is there's been so many polls done where how enthusiastic are you about the selection, right? And it's a lot lower than it usually is, which is not good, especially in like the cities, and that's why I don't think that President Biden is going to carry Pennsylvania. I think Trump's going to end up winning here, uh, but yeah. So that with th with that being said, Trump's already reelected, two eighty seven to two hundred two. But I'll go ahead and categorize the rest of the four. Now, if I made this video like two or three weeks ago, or honestly before I checked the polling, I would have think I would have thought at least Virginia is likely for President Biden. But it's gotten a lot closer. The last poll out was what I think it was President Biden winning by one point, and then the poll before that they were tied. I think it was forty-eight, forty-eight. They were tied, and then the one I just saw, I think it was forty to forty-one, or it was forty-one to forty-two. So it's just a one-point difference, which is well within the margin of error for both. I do think that because of like the Northern Virginia area, it always goes blue. Um, President Biden will still eke out the win here. I think it'll be tilt, though. Much closer than it normally would have been. Now let's go to Wisconsin. That's another state I think President Biden will barely win here. Uh, Wisconsin being, Biden's been winning the polls slightly, right? And then the whole urban centers like Milwaukee, they're going to support Biden here. Um, but but the, like I said, the state with the working class manufacturing vote, it kind of does make it more competitive between Trump doing well there. But I do think Trump will barely lose the state here. So they're at 225 to 287 right now. Minnesota is another state I think President Biden would win. <coughs> this is because um, I've seen polling where they're like, what, two points apart. I don't think President Trump will win here. But at the same time, I can understand why someone would make the case that it would be really close and why I'm making the case it'll be close. Because... The whole Somali American population there, they don't really approve of how the the war in Gaza slash Palestine slash Hamas slash Israel, however you want to categorize it, is going, um, which makes sense. So these people, they're not going to go to President Trump, right? Because Trump's more pro-Israel than President Biden is. They're going to go to the, like the couch, honestly. They're not going to come out and vote. Or they're just going to go to like a protest for like Cornell West. RFK is pretty much pro-Israel as well, so they wouldn't go there. So he, Same thing with Michigan, right? These people, they're not going to turn out and vote because, who, like, President Biden is the less of a pro-Israel candidate, but he's not going to, based off, like, what, this conflict's happened for eight months now, what, nothing he does now is going to change their vote, which on, which leads me to believe that they're not going to come out and vote or they're just going to vote for Cornell West or some other third-party protest vote, which, in Minnesota, I do think won't be enough to flip the state to President Trump. But, oh yeah, I forgot about Nebraska. That'll also be uh, tilt for President Biden. But Michigan, I can definitely see the case. Now, I do see President Biden leading in the polls in Michigan. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I just have a feeling like that President Trump's going to win Michigan, barely, if he does. Uh, and I really think the whole the Arab American, Muslim American population here is like a lot bigger than it is in Minnesota. Which you can see by also the protest vote that they had in the primary for President Biden, which leads me to believe that Min Michigan in the end, will, like the Arab American slash Muslim American vote is just not going to be there for President Biden. They're not going to come up for President Trump, but that's not really that big of the problem, right? Because President Trump doesn't really need them to win. Well, all, well, he does, but at the same time, President Biden needs them. And if they stay at home, that also works for President Trump, which leads me to believe that 302 to 236 as of right now. Now, M Michigan, I'm um, a lot more skeptical on. I could see this easily going to like, like, like President Biden. Till I don't think it'll be lean. So, but as of right now, I think Michigan will end up going red. It'll be 302 to 236. It's my final prediction. Not for today, Wednesday, June 19th. I'll make another video next week on my prediction, uh, with new polling and how the election cycle, I guess, is continuing. So yeah. So stay tuned for that. 
If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'm getting started. Uh, it means a lot. Also, uh, please comment, share the video. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, have a great day.